He unsnapped the small leather holster at his belt and got out his knife and then stood up and took off his shirt again. He cut off the sleeves at the elbow and sat and wrapped his feet in them and pulled on the boots. He put the knife back in the holster and fastened it and picked up the pistol and stood and listened. A red-winged blackbird. Nothing. As he turned to go, he heard the truck very faintly on the far side of the river. He looked for it, but he couldn't see it. He thought that by now, probably the two men had crossed the river and were somewhere behind him. He went on through the trees. The trunk silted up from the high water, and the roots tangled among the rocks. He took off his boots again to try to cross the gravel without leaving any tracks, and he climbed a long and rocky rincon toward the south rim of the river canyon, carrying the boots and the wrappings and the pistol and keeping an eye on the terrain below. The sun was in the canyon, and the rocks he'd crossed would dry in minutes. At a bench near the rim, he stopped and lay on his belly, with his boots in the grass beside him. It was only another ten minutes to the top, but he didn't think he had ten minutes. On the far side of the river, a hawk set forth from the cliffs, whistling thinly. He waited. After a while, a man came out of the cane upriver and paused and stood. He was carrying a machine gun. A second man emerged below him. They glanced at one another and then came on. They passed below him, and he watched them out of sight down the river. He wasn't really even thinking about them. He was thinking about his truck. When the courthouse opened at 9 o'clock Monday morning, someone was going to be calling in the vehicle number and getting his name and address. This was some 24 hours away. By then they would know who he was, and they would never stop looking for him. Never, as in never. He had a brother in California. He was supposed to tell, What? Arthur. There's some old boys on their way down there to see you, who propose to lower your balls between the jaws of a six-inch machinist's vice, and commence cranking on the handle a quarter turn at a time, whether you know where I'm at or not. You might want to think about moving to China. He sat up and wrapped his feet and pulled the boots on and stood and started up the last stretch of canyon to the rim, where he crested out the country, lay dead flat, stretching away to the south and to the east, red dirt and creosote, mountains in the far and middle distance, nothing out there, heat shimmer. He stuck the pistol in his belt and looked down at the river one more time, and then set out east. Langtry, Texas, was thirty miles as the crow flees. Maybe less. Ten hours. Twelve. His feet were already hurting. His leg hurt. His chest. His arm. The river dropped away behind him. He hadn't even taken a drink. End of chapter one. Chapter two. Begins. I don't know if law enforcement work is more dangerous now than what it used to be or not. I know when I first took office, you'd have a fist fight somewheres, and you'd go to break it up, and they'd offer to fight you. And sometimes you had to accommodate them. They wouldn't have it no other way. And you'd better not lose, neither. You don't see that so much no more. But maybe you see worse. I had a man pull a gun on me one time, and it happened that I grabbed it just as he went to fire, and the plunger on the hammer went right through the fleshy part of my thumb, you can see the mark of it there. But that man had ever intention of killing me. A few years ago, and it wasn't that many neither I was going out one of these little two-lane blacktop roads of a night, and I come up on a pickup truck, that they was two old boys settin' in the bed of it. They kindly blinked in the lights, and I backed off some, but the truck had Coahuila plates on it, and I thought, well, I need to stop these old boys and take a look. So I hit the lights, and whenever I done that, I seen the slider window in the back of the cab open, and here comes somebody passing a shotgun out the window to the old boy setting in the bed of the truck. I'll tell you right now, I hit them brakes with both feet. It skidded the unit sideways to where the lights was going out into the brush. But the last thing I seen in the bed of the truck was the old boy putting that shotgun to his shoulder. I hit the seat, and I just had hit it when here come the windshield all over me in them little bitty pieces they break up into. I still had one foot on the brake, 
and I could feel the cruiser sliding down into the bar ditch. And I thought it was going to roll, but it didn't. It filled the car just full of dirt. The old boy, he opened up on me twice more and shot all the glass out of one side of the cruiser. And by then, I'd come to a stop, and I laid there in the seat, had my pistol out, and I heard that pickup leave out, and I raised up and fired several shots at the taillights, but they was long gone.